Welcome to Becker's 27th annual meeting, the business and operations of ASCs, and the featured session, the new frontier of outpatient care, the role of technology in driving business growth and ensuring the highest quality of care in the ASC setting. I'm Alan Condon, Managing Editor at Becker's Healthcare, and thank you so much for joining us today. Before we kick things off, we'll just walk through a few quick housekeeping items. You can submit any questions you have throughout today's session by typing them in the Q&A box to see in your dashboard. Today's session is being recorded and will be available after the event. You can use the same link you used to log into today's session to access the recording. If at any time you don't see your slides moving or have trouble with the audio, please try refreshing your browser. You can also submit any technical questions you have into the Q&A box on your screen. We're here to help. So without further ado, we'll get, get to our speakers today. And I'm happy to introduce, first of all, Dr. Corey Callendine. So thanks so much, Alan. Um, gl glad to be with you. My name is Corey Callendine. I'm an orthopedic surgeon. I practice in the greater Nashville area. My, my practice mix is really, well, it's hip and knee replacement, and I operate in a hospital setting, uh, and we have a, a JV in our ASC uh, where we do joint replacements too. So lots to cover and, um, and uh, lots to go over, and as we discuss, avail today. Good to be with you, Alan, and the others on the panel. Fantastic. Thank you, Dr. Callendine. And we'll jump into Dr. Betsy Dovek from Advent Health. Yes, hi. Um, my name is Betsy Dovek, and I am a bariatric surgeon, and I predominantly do gastric bypass and sleeve gastrectomy and revisional surgeries. And I do them as a uh, hospital-employed physician now at Advent Health in Orlando, Florida. I do them both in a inpatient setting, um, in a hospital setting, but also at ambulatory surgery centers as an outpatient. And I have one of the largest experiences in the country at doing straight outpatient bariatric surgery, and I'm very excited to talk about some of this work as a pioneer. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Dr. Dovek. And last but not least, Dr. Scott Fossett. Alan, thank you so much for having me today. My name is Scott Fawcett. I practice as an orthopedic surgeon in Washington, D.C. area. I uh, actually have uh, avail in all three of my locations in our surgical training lab facilities and in two of our ASCs. Um, and it's great to be able to bring people into the operating room and kind of share what we're doing some of the innovations we're seeing that uh, Dr. Dovek is talking about and just some classic training techniques uh, that Corey's talked about as well. With that, let's dive in and let's take a look at some of the current challenges that, that are present in the ASC setting today. You can see with this list, there are lots of headwinds and areas where efficiencies and different ways to make things more streamlined are, are really important in, in the ASC setting. So the first question I have for each of you to kind of kick things off, Dr. Dr. Callendine, I'll start with you. Uh, if you could share with the audience some of the current challenges from this list that really resonate with you. Yeah, Alan, I think that's a great list. There are probably a lot of challenges uh, in the ASC world. That's why we have Beckers, right? And uh, we just opened our center in February of what I like to refer to as COVID year. So February of 2020. So that brought its own challenges, of course. You know, we went through all the same insurance contracting and education of patients and making sure we had a support structure around the patients as we evolved, particularly in joint replacement. Like I mentioned, that's really my focus, hip and knee replacement, making sure we could support those patients uh, in the outpatient setting. You know, the others on the call are really you know, innovators in, in trying to push more and more surgery to the outpatient, but that's got to be done in a very specific way. There are unique challenges, obviously, to sending patients home the same day. You know, for us too, I, I mentioned earlier, we pr I practice in a hospital that's literally across the parking lot from the ASC, but when, as we're opening, we really don't have twice the, you know, support staff from industry, for example, to kind of support those cases. And that's where some of these opportunities for avail can come in, where you can really have, if it's your device rep at the hospital and you need help at ASC, or vice versa, physician is at the hospital and they need help at the ASC and back and forth. It allows this open exchange in our ASC and that kind of collaboration, not only with my partners, but our hospital partner has, has really been powerful. So I think that's really the opportunity Opportunity, and I know that's what we're going to spend a lot of time talking about today, is how can we connect to each other better to kind of meet some of these challenges. But, but that, that's been my exposure so far. You know, year over year, more and more cases are going towards the outpatient, but doing it correctly with hip and knee replacement, I think, really takes some thought. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And Dr. Dovek, I'd love to hear from you as well. Some of these challenges, what are the ones that resonate with you? 
Yeah, I mean, I couldn't agree with Corey more. It's um, you really need to properly select the patient. Um, safety at the bottom there is is the is the top one. Um, for me, all of my patients are morbidly obese, and so at baseline, they are a riskier patient population. And so there's the thought of um, maybe the surgery center isn't located as conveniently across the street. Maybe you're across town, which is how I was when I was practicing in Baltimore. It was about 20 minutes from our hospital, mm -hmm. so I really had. To to be on point in terms of um, surgical technique. Um, bleeding is one of the early um, issues that could be um, quite life-threatening even if they developed orthostatic hypotension. Um, and then there's also you know, how do you um, help to mitigate um, nausea and pain control and making sure they're moving around and preventing blood clots and um, all of those other potential complications. So it's not just about picking the right patient, but also educating them and setting those expectations very well from the forefront that we went over our discharge instructions, for example, in the pre-op area before surgery. We made sure that they were up and walking around within an hour of the completion of the operation. We did some different things with different medications to try a big thing for us is nausea and making sure that they can stay hydrated by mouth. <clears throat> So there was a lot of, in the design of the ERAS, the early enhanced recovery after surgery, developing protocols that were specific to our patient population and the surgeries that we do, that were a big deal in doing this. And then some of the other concerns are, um, you know, in different things with uh, whether you're hospital employed or if you are in private practice and it is a business and how do you keep um, the cost of supplies lean and, and how do you do that from a P&L standpoint? And so there's a lot to learn about from the business side. And so I think it's so exciting to share best practices across different specialties to determine how you can, of course, A, do this safely and B, um, make a living off of it as well. So um, I think there's a lot of exciting opportunity and I'm excited um, to hear from the other panelists throughout this call tonight. Awesome. Thank you so much, Dr. Dovek. And uh, Dr. Foss, I would love to get your two cents here as well. Yeah, I would echo... Uh, everything that uh, Dr. Kalanda and Dr. Dovek had mentioned, you know, key things on safety. I think uh, where we fall in is there's a lot of competition in our area. We're a private practice. Uh, Maryland is a, a state without a certificate of need. Um, and so anyone can just put up a one or two room surgery center in the area. Um, and so it's really highlighting what is about our surgery center on both on the provider, the surgeon side, to attract new surgeons to come do the surgery, as well as make patients and other referring providers comfortable and understanding what it means to have surgery, a major surgery like a joint replacement or a hip arthroscopy or something like that in the outpatient setting. Um, certainly COVID really changed a lot of that in terms of the access to hospital care. Um, and we really started to understand what we can and can't do in this uh, ASC facility, as well as the patient safety in terms of you know making sure that you know we're not having to board people in the recovery unit that has another person who could be potentially trauma patient with COVID that hasn't been tested yet. So, um, so that's, that's, that's been a huge uh, advantage. I feel like with Avail, we've definitely used it on the marketing side of the, the challenges of ASC and have been able to bring people who have traditionally not been able to come into the operating room and kind of highlight the technology that we're able to use in the center um, and the great care that we're doing. To kick things off, that's what we're going to be talking about today in addressing some of these challenges that, that each of you just brought up. One platform, which, which Dr. Fawcett alluded to, called Avail, may, Avail may help. Our speakers will talk about how that might look in just a minute. But before we do that, let's jump into a quick two and a half minute video, which demonstrates how remote medical collaboration with Avail works. Connect from anywhere. Be a part of the procedure. Introducing Remote Medical Collaboration, pioneered by Avail. A fully integrated hardware and software solution connects a network of physicians and medical device industry experts at the touch of a button, enabling real-time collaboration during procedures. A remote physician, medical expert, or medical device representative answers a call from a treating physician on their laptop or iPad 
and instantly they're in on the procedure, able to control cameras and imaging views, switch between inputs, zoom in and zoom out, freeze the frame, split the screen, and annotate to collaborate right in the moment. Calcium is right in the center, not letting the balloon inflate. Yeah, the sword dead center to that calcium. I'm at almost 30 atmospheres in the balloon and it's not even budging. Throughout the procedure, both parties can communicate two-way as if they're together. The Avail console is a self-contained mobile unit that can be moved within the procedure room and used throughout a facility. High-definition pan, tilt-zoom cameras and a six-foot overhead boom arm provides views of the entire operating environment with 30 times zoom. See procedural details up close. External imaging inputs from the procedure room, like ultrasound and x-ray, are connected into the Avail console. Two-way collaboration is made possible with a 32-inch console monitor that mirrors the remote user's view. Access a contact list of medical experts to see who's available and connect securely with just a touch. Avail is building a network of procedural expertise where healthcare professionals and the medical device industry collaborate like never before. The system is HIPAA high-tech protected and encrypted for security. Avail uses a software-as-a-service model with no upfront capital equipment purchase. We're a dedicated partner who will deliver, set up, and support members 24-7, 365. Become part of the Avail network and see what membership can do. Because when you're connected, you can achieve so much more together. Okay, so as you can see there, Avail's technology is fundamentally designed to enable peers, proctors, referring physicians, trainees, study coordinators, and medical device industry reps to be in an operating room, whether it's supporting a procedure or transferring clinical knowledge without the requirement of having to physically be in the OR. So let's talk about this system a little bit more. Dr. Fawcett, I'd love to kick things off with you. How, how can Avail be used to solve some of the challenge we were just discussing earlier? Thanks, Helen. So, you know, when you look at a system that's able to integrate, you know, there's complexities in, in, in being able to bring teleconferencing to uh, each room, right? We don't want, we can't get the granulation or the safety aspect of someone holding their iPhone and doing a FaceTime while you're in the operating room. Uh, the quality of the image is not great. And the integration with, you know, imaging, for instance, I'm a sports medicine surgeon. So with this system, I'm able to integrate all the different to tools that we have, whether it's information from our fluoros machine, whether it's the arthroscopic imaging, or even like when we're doing some robotic joint replacement, we can bring that robotic screen and help kind of navigate through that. Uh, I think that's added a huge potential to bring people who are remote, who may not have, who may have knowledge, but also bring people who are eager to learn knowledge and gain that knowledge. And we can share that with them without having them bring them across country, state, or even across the parking lot. Absolutely. And Dr. Kalman, I'd love to get your two cents as well. From, as an orthopedic surgeon, how, how do you currently use Avail and how does Avail solve some of the challenges that you had alluded to at the start of this panel? Yeah, I mean, that that's really what it is, is what Scott was talking about. We're talking about the ability to connect you know, two ways, right? So obviously we want outside resources to help our ASC. I think that's very valuable, but also there's some really amazing things that we're doing on our ASC that obviously we'd like to share. You, you know, we, we've talked around the COVID thing a few times. I had the privilege of doing a lot of training in the robotic space, like Dr. Fawcett was commenting on, you know, robotic hip and knee replacement. We're just kind of scratching the surface. This is largely a new field and my goodness, if you read Becker's, you know, robotics is going to explode. And so uh, that's that's all the projections for sure. But listen, this is a early young field, right? So how are we going to maximize that benefit for our patient, but also learn as we go, so to speak? Not that we're, you know, it's not a trial and error thing, but how are we going to share best practices? And I really think that's where Avail is so important. Sure, from a, from a surgical technical side, like 
like we keep talking about. Like if if I have a trick or Dr. Fawcett has a trick that we can share back and forth, obviously that's important and valuable to the patient, but also on the support side. So industry or, you know, uh, 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 there's other players in this space. And so how can we share best practices just like we're doing now, right? I mean, I'm sitting in my clinic and we're all in different states. Why can't we have the same kind of connectivity actually in the operating room? It turns out we can. Absolutely. I mean, couldn't agree more in terms of the collaboration and sharing of that best practices. And Dr. Dove, I'd love to come to you as well. Anything regarding the challenge you brought up earlier, even specifically to the field of bariatric surgery or anything else that, that you would really use, uh, you see, see Avail as proving beneficial for it within your practice? Yeah, we've had so much fun with Avail um, in the surgery center space. Um, like, like you heard, it's a great way to either talk one on one with another surgeon, a colleague, maybe a young um, resident in training, a fellow, or even one to many. You can do um, events like Grand Rounds. Um, we even did an event where we did a peer to peer kind of a meet and greet with some um, primary care physicians. When we were operating on their patient, we brought them into the operating room and we showed them this is the sleeve. This is how we, we do this procedure. Um, and we were able to walk and talk and explain things. And um, it was just a really cool added touch that I'm sure made it much more memorable than me coming in with my Panera Box lunch and uh, having the little chat in the office that way. Um, we also have done some really um, really kind of cool um, patient experience um, uh, podcasts in the operating room. There's a uh, somewhat famous um, group, two girls called Our Sleeved Life Podcast. And I went um, on the podcast with them with Avail Technology. And we showed um, the masses, the, the, you know, the non-medical people out there. Um, this is this is the heart beating um, through the chest. And this is, and this right here is the liver and this is the stomach. And this is what your anatomy looks like. And you can see, huh, it kind of breaks down that, that mysterious, what is it like in the operating room? Is there blood pouring out everywhere? Hopefully not. And it just shows that this is a pretty clean procedure. And we did the same thing with the gastric bypass and it got thousands of views. So that was very exciting. I've also worked with industry and we have um, brought uh, research and development, the R D side into the operating room as I'm trying um, different instruments, different stapling devices, new technologies, getting real-time feedback to and from, which was exciting in a way that they really haven't been able to do an innovation. And I think that's going to really um, quicken quicken the innovation because of those opportunities. And then I also even trained um, some new device reps um, that say, this is what the surgeons are going to say. This is, um, let me show you around um, the anatomy here of a typical gastric bypass, for example. And this is how your products are in use. So it, it's been, um, we've had some really interesting opportunities um, with it. And I think the sky's the limits and the creativity that you can do to connect people into the operating room just to advance the field of bariatric and, and far beyond that too. Yeah, absolutely. And so, so, so interesting to get your perspective there from, first of all, from a training standpoint, obviously with the device reps and also that, that real-time access to the, to the operating room that, that may have not, been, uh, have not been available to others before. So moving on to our next portion of this, this panel, I, I want to dive a little deeper into this technology. And I'd love to hear from each of you about one specific ASC challenge that you encountered how did, you, how did you solve that challenge by using a veil? And why did you choose a veil? Uh, Dr. Dovig, I'd love to give you first crack at this and, and get, hear your two cents here. So there's a product specifically that um, is used on our stapling devices that we use. Stapling devices are a huge part of the procedures that we do, both sleeve, gastric bypass, revisions, all of it. There's typically um, a stapler involved. And so to be at an ASC setting, as I mentioned before, bleeding is one of our major risks that can happen that night of surgery. The timing for something like a leak, for example, would be longer out. So with the bleed, we really want to make sure that things are hemostatic. So we had been trialing different um, products that existed out there on the market, and we used something called staple line reinforcement material. So I was able to, to use that with the, with the reps um, actually remotely because of COVID. We didn't want too much foot traffic in the operating room. So we were able to, in the time of COVID, still get the, the proper products there to help um, to obtain hemostasis, and, um, and they could still be a part of it even though they weren't located on the premise. So that was a great use of Avail. And that's when I started to use it is during the pandemic. 
Fantastic, great to hear. Uh, Dr. Callendon, I'd love to hear from you as well. One specific ASC challenge that you encounter and then why did you choose Avail to, to, to address it? Yeah, I think the specific challenge that is going to hit us in hip and knee replacement is this use of robotics, which I mentioned briefly earlier. The specific system I use actually has an extra guy in the operating room. And you've heard from a lot of us why we don't want increased foot, foot tra traffic in the operating room. And this is true in the hospital setting too, of course, but uh, perhaps more so in a fresh ASC, you know, uh, uh, in for in, in, in an infection complication, particularly when you're when your initial case volume is low, could be disastrous for you. So um, obviously we're doing everything we can to prevent infection, but minimizing foot traffic is one of them. So with the robotic system that I use, there's an extra person. So there's your implant guy, right? He's got all the metal and equipment, but then there's the specialist. We, we call him the Mako product specialist in the room. So that's an extra person. Well, again, because we're operating in two facilities now that are geographically close enough that if there was an emergency, maybe they could run over. But the reality is, is that's just not practical because you're not getting real time in the operating room assistance. So the, the problem is too many people in the operating room and we don't have a robotic specialist because this is a this is a, a, a new role that we simply didn't have. The solution and, and you know, you mentioned earlier and. I, I'm, I'm sure Dr. Dovek will have some comments on this, but there are other platforms that allow for this type of procedural telemedicine, but Avail in particular, we were drawn to for some of the audio things and, and we're constantly making improvements to that, but but also the visuals. So there, there are two cameras with this system. You know, one's mounted, it's kind of the room camera, it's mounted above the in-room monitor, but the other camera's on a boom. And with with 30X Zoom and, you know, the, the person watching controls those cameras, cameras. And so with that type of, you know, variability for the person that's viewing, they can really capture exactly what's going on in the operating room and be there in real time, right? I'm not waiting on anybody. Be there in real time to provide, again, that that high level of, uh, of excellence in care and in what is largely a new discipline of robotics. So that, that, that's really where we've used it most so far. Fantastic. Uh, great to hear the insight from you, Dr. Callendine. And from a sports medicine perspective, do, you, do your thoughts align with Dr. Callendine's there, Dr. Fawcett, or any, any other challenges we may not have touched on that the UC Avail also addressing in your practice? Very much so. I agree with those, those comments. I think one of the other things that we haven't addressed is space. So uh, in a surgery center, these rooms are not massive, you know, heart rooms or things. Like these, are, these are tight rooms. And uh, it also, it needs to be a versatile room. So sometimes we may be doing, uh, we'll finish a case, but before that case is ready to go, the room is getting cleaned up. We're going to go to another room and do the other procedure. So the mobility and the size of a veil is, is uh, I think, another advantage of a veil is the ability to move it from room to room. So it don't have to have every single room set up for tele te telemedicine. Um, and we can just move it quickly, get it all hooked up, start the next case. Fantastic. And uh, before we move on to our next slide, I'd just love to open it up here. We've touched on quite a few challenges there, obviously, throughout this presentation, specific to each of your, your practices. But is there anything we, that avail can be used on other potential benefits or advantages that, that we haven't touched on uh, so far? Uh, Dr. Callendine, Dr. Dovek, Dr. Foss, I'd love to open this up to you and hear your perspectives. Anything else you can expand on or anything else we need to touch on? Yeah, you know, a really interesting concept for me is I've spent some time thinking about, you know, where is procedural telemedicine going? We've hit on it a little bit, but I think it's this access uh, directly to patients. I think this could be really powerful. There's so much anxiety. Patients don't really know um, you know, what to really expect, right? There's these horror stories and, and some people want less information and that's fine. But many patients will want a better, deeper insight. And I think that's really powerful. You know, the thing that we always talk about on the avail side is, you know, if there's live procedures being covered, okay? So you could, you could log in like you would uh, YouTube TV, right? I mean, live TV. But then what, what if, what if there was a, uh, um, you know, a database like a Netflix type setup, right? So, you, so you could log in at, at, at a, as, as a Netflix type option. And I mean, not just for professionals and colleagues, but also as a mode to improve patient education, 
we, we know patient education has direct effect on outcomes. So what could we do with that? And, and, and how does this like taking down the door, if you will, how does this allowing access in the operating room, how does that help the patient? Ultimately, I think that's what our, ha our focus has to be. And I think there's a real opportunity for the YouTube and the Netflix model, if you will. Yeah, I think that um, having a library of your cases, these, face it, I'm sure all of us out there as clinicians will say, when a patient comes to see us, they said, oh, I've already seen this on YouTube. I've already checked out the video. I already know what it's like. It's like, oh, really? They've done that. They do their homework. They, it's, it seems to be with the, the good old internet and social media, there's a lot of information that already exists out there. And with that, social media, having a digital footprint. If you don't have a digital footprint out there as a provider, then you really don't exist. And I think this is just critically something else that you can add to marketing yourself, marketing your practice, your skill set, who you are, and why somebody should pick you to do their surgery. It's a big decision. You want to make sure that you're in the game. And I think this helps you do that. Yeah, I would agree. And I think, you know, having a live surgery and having those opportunities. So we do like, a, 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 we've done a number of times with physical therapists just signing on. So having them be able to be there and you know share the anatomy that Dr. Dovek had mentioned and see that stuff and see how you do your procedure. Um, you know, it, 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 for them, they really get a lot of value. Out of it. They understand why we say they, you know, the protocols that we give them and can develop, develop a bit, much uh, bigger understanding than um, just, you know, get here's the sheet or, or watch it on watch the video that dynamic ability to be able to share information back and forth real time while the procedure is going on is val very valuable fantastic well, fantastic to get all your insights there from you know the breadth of patient education communication like you said real-time communication uh improving that access to the or enhancing your digital footprint and obviously the obvious marketing benefits that, that avail can offer your practice too so looking ahead, we're diving through, uh, closing down our last portion of this of this presentation. I'd love to hear from each of you. How do you see the ASC evolving over the next one to three years? And how do you think Avail can support these challenges? Uh, Dr. Fawcett, I'd love to go to you first for this for this question. I think the complexity of cases is uh, going to continue to increase um, at the ASC. I think with Medicare removing a lot of cases in the orthopedic realm off the inpatient only list just brings those there. And as those continue to grow, um, you know, we are going to continue to need the support that, uh, you know, Dr. Cal and I had mentioned between reps, just because it's just, as those cases are moving there, there's still cases at the main hospital and we're going to need that rep support. Um, as, you know, as implant prices, margins keep coming down farther and farther and farther, industry is going to have to give some movement and that may mean reducing their sales force and leveraging uh technology like a veil to help make sure that you know what's going in is what needs to be in and uh, providing support to the staff dr condon i'd love to throw it to you here also and get your get your two thoughts um you know evolving evolving patterns in the asc setting uh how do you see a veil really addressing these changes over the, the next one one to three years yeah, I, I, I think what we are going to see is more and more joint replacements. Again, that's the area that I know best. More and more hip and knee replacements are going to go towards the ASC. And look, there there is a, let, let's just call it what it is. There is a bit of a race to the bottom from a financial standpoint, right? We're trying to deliver more care with less money. And so we have to leverage everything in order in order to do that so that we never compromise patient care. That's that's the whole point. I, I don't know on a on a federal level if there's full understanding of what it means to take a uh, procedure off the inpatient only list. But I can tell you this, it's up to us as physicians that are providing the care to those patients to make sure they're getting the very best. And uh, there are some limitations. We've talked about footprint and access and people and l lower infection rates, complexity of cases. We, we have to have improved connectivity in order to deliver that in a brand new care setting. I, I, I think Obviously, joints will continue to expand in the outpatient setting, and probably for the next ten years, and and then we'll see, right? Maybe it'll maybe it'll oscillate back to facilities, but but I think we've got a solid decade of trying to figure this out on the ASC side. Now, see, Dr. Dovid, love to get your two cents. Uh, how, are you, how are you looking at the ASC industry, first of all, in general, and also from a bariatric surgery standpoint? What are trends that you're focusing on, and how do you really see a being able to help you there? 
Yeah, I mean, I think that COVID really, you know, out of necessity, really did force innovation and opportunity. And um, and, and going to a surgery center was certainly one of those things. Another one of those things in my practice is that in, as of March of 2020, we went 100% virtual. So we do offer 100% telemedicine appointments. And this sort of just goes along with it that um, you know, you're just, again, connecting with patients in these informational sessions um, in uh, opportunities at their appointments. So that's part of it. And then we're also meeting with them. Um, we're meeting with other people. I'm talking on Zoom at all times. We're doing this right now. We're connecting um, in the operating room as well. So I think it's going to, like with all the things we've already said, that I think that the ASC is obviously evolving, as you mentioned. It is here to stay. I think the genie is out of the bottle. So if you don't get going now, um, you're going to be, you know, the last one on board. You really have to be there at the ground level. And I think that Avail is is going to be instrumental, not just in, in, in operating room techniques, but also being in that space with other providers and helping other surgeons see how is it done. And, and I think it's sharing again, like how, how do you run this as a business? How do you do this safely? What are your expectations and your, um, your, your um, different clinical pathways? And, and it's allowing that opportunity to share it again in real time, like we've all said, while you're operating and you can um, point out all those things as it goes. So there's just so, so much potential um, here and it's um, exciting for you guys that have to be again, right there first to market and one of the first ones out there um, to, to put your, your things out there for everyone. Absolutely. It sounds like such a real, a real innovative technology and something that's ideally suited to the ASC setting. Um, but before we close out, I'd love to throw it to Dr. Foster, Dr. Callan, or Dr. Dovek. Any, any final thoughts or any, any closing remarks that might be important to make or let our audience know before we wrap up today? Alan, I would just say, again, thank you to Beckers uh, for hosting this. Leadership in this space has been uh, of great value to me, my partners, our practice. So so thank you so much. You, you know, Avail is largely based on this concept of democratizing access to care, okay? That's the concept, democratizing access to the very best in healthcare. And so maybe this is the technology to do it, right? Maybe we can use this technology to do that. But I think as we as providers and you guys as Beckers and business guys, I, I think as long as we keep our eyes on the patient, we're going to be just fine. Thanks again, Alan. And thanks to Dr. Fassett and uh, Dr. Dovit. Good to be with you guys. Fantastic. Well, that is all the time we have for today. Again, I'd like to thank Dr. Fossett, Dr. Callendine, and Dr. Dovick for a fantastic present today, presentation today. And of course, to, to thank you, big thank you to Avail for sponsoring today's session. For more infor information, please visit avail.io forward slash outpatient. Thank you again for joining us at Becker's 27th Annual Meeting, the Business and Operations of ASCs. Please enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs>